Today we will be showing a cool experiment about chemical reactions. Do you know that baking cookies can be a chemical reaction? Do you know what chemical reactions are? If you don't, it surprises in which one or more substances, the reactants, are converted to one or more different substances, the products. Some evidence that a chemical reaction is taking place are a color and change, a change in odor, precipitate formation, and the appearance of gas bubbles. There are multiple things to mention that come from the subject, but for now, we'll just stick to some. And these are, how can chemical reactions be expressed? A chemical formula uses chemical symbols and numbers to represent a given substance. The chemical symbols in a chemical formula tell you what elements make up a substance. For example, the chemical formula of water is H2O. To express reactions, Chemical formulas can be joined together in an equation. A chemical equation is an expression that uses symbols to show up the relationship between the starting substances and the substances that are produced by a chemical reaction. And an example of a chemical equation is C carbon plus O2 oxygen equals to CO2 carbon dioxide. And the thermic and exothermic reactions. The thermic reactions are any chemical reaction that absorbs heat from its environment. A hallmark of this type of reaction is that it feels cold. A good example of a thermic reaction includes dissolving a salt. It doesn't have to be table salt, nor does the solvent need to be water. And exothermic reactions are reactions that release heat and have a net negative standard and they'll be changed. Examples include any combustion process rusting of iron, and freezing water. Some examples of chemical reactions are photosynthesis, rust, baking digestion, combustion, chemical bacteria, fermentation, and washing with soap and water. Chemical reactions occur everywhere in the world around you, not just in a chemistry lab. Now, Bonitas, tell us a little bit more about the kitchen safety. Thank you, Melanie. Some of the kitchen safety that we need for this experiment are First, we have to use the coat. Second, it's very important to wash our hands. Third, the area that we will use for this experiment has to be clean and all the tools as well. Or use gloves to use the oven or while using the instrument. Fifth, adult supervision when using fire. Please, Simon, can you tell us about the equipment? Yes, Daniel, let me explain. The equipment that we are going to use for this experiment are Measuring cup. It is a kitchen utensil used to measure the volume of liquid or hot solid cooking ingredients such as flour and sugar. Measuring cups usually can have capacity of approximately 1 cup to approximately 4 cups. Measuring spoon. It is a spoon used to measure an amount of an ingredient, either liquid or dry, when cooking. They are viable in many sizes, including the teaspoon and tablespoon. Electric mixer. It is a kitchen device used to mix food or liquid in a bowl. Oven. It is a tool which is used to expose material to a hot environment. Similar kitchen tools that we can find in the science lab are Beaker, measuring cup Sample spoon, me can be measuring spoon Bunsen burner, can be stove Laboratory oven, can be stove oven Electric lab mixer, can be mixer Scientific timer, can be stove timer or a watch Analytic balance, can be small digital weighing scale so, Nidal, can you show us the experiment and tell us about the reactants? Of course, Simon. Let me start with the reactants. The reactants in this cookie's recipe are 3 quarters cup of sugar, 3 quarters cup of brown sugar, 1 cup of butter, 1 large egg, 2 1 quarter cup of flour, 1 teaspoon of baking soda, 
half teaspoon of salt and two cups of chocolate chips. For this experiment, first we need to preheat the oven to 375 degrees. Then we mix sugar, brown sugar, egg and butter in a large bowl. What we have until now are physical changes. Carbon dioxide gas and water vapor form the bubbles which make the cookies rise. The sugar, flour and eggs now cannot be separated. Dylan, you should try this. But first, can you explain if this chemical reaction is endothermic or exothermic? Yes, Nidal. Let me explain. So first, uh, let me explain you about endothermic reaction and exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction transfers the energy to the surrounding and the temperature of the surrounding increases. But in the other hand, endothermic reaction takes in the energy and the temperature of the surrounding decreases. So in this case, the chemical reaction when baking cookies is endothermic reaction. Because as I said, in an endothermic reaction, the system consumes energy from the surrounding areas. Baked goods utilize the heat derived from the oven to bake batter mix and transforms it into a solid pastry. Now Rohelio shows the chemical equation. Thank you Dylan. Now the next thing that we will present will be the chemical equation that we found when baking cookies. As you can see below, the equation is represented as reactants with a sodium bicarbonate then it passes through heat and gives us the products that are sodium carbonate plus water plus carbon dioxide. In this fun experiment, we were able to learn about chemical reaction and how we can find them in our daily life. From this experiment, we can recover that in house, we found plenty of chemical reaction. For example, in our case, by baking cookies. Also, we found out that most of the tools that we use at home are very similar to the ones that we use in the lab. For example, a beaker is very similar to a measuring cup. 
We learned that while making a cookie, it causes an endothermic reaction because the cookie absorbs energy from the surrounding area. In this case, the heat from the oven. And at last but not least, we learned that this, making a cookie, causes a chemical reaction because when heating the sodium bicarbonate, it causes the substance to decompose into water plus carbon dioxide. Thank you.